Look at that beautiful fish, y'all. It's awesome. Good morning, fishing freaks. Welcome on back to the channel, y'all. Glad you're here for my little, you know, few day fishing journey out on the road, back into some of the my old stomping grounds. And uh, we're about to leave camp right now. Uh, I really I haven't set up a tent or anything. I've just been truck camping. I'm gonna show y'all later today um, how how I'm setting this up. Leaving this lake, we're gonna fish here in the morning, and then we're gonna go to another lake that's close by that I've caught some hammers at. But I think I got one more day in me, so. Today we're fishing two lakes. We're gonna fish here in the morning because it's hot water and it's in the 30s right now. And then we're gonna try to get on, just catch a hog this afternoon. She's a little bit steamy to say the least. It has really cooled off. It's in the 30s. And this, uh, this power plant on this side of the lake <laughs> the water's just hot. It's hotter than there, obviously. 68.7 degrees. I haven't fished this area the last few days that I've been on this lake, so I'm gonna start out doing some cranking uh, along a little like riprap area, and then I'm gonna try some timber since it's gonna be a little calmer today. We still got some winds, but it's not gonna be anything like yesterday. Yesterday was tough. All right, can you guys see me? You ready? You ready to see one? Let's get one on the line. All right, hopefully y'all can see you through this fog situation <clears throat> but I'm gonna start off doing hard baits uh, I'm gonna go with the grande banger probably gonna throw a jerk bait as well I might throw a recon try to get a little deeper although I lost my red one that was doing the damage I always leaned more towards give me some of that that wind and active bass rather than like a slow slower bite that i'm gonna have to you know really dangle on the fish hard in some calmer areas <clears throat> like if they're if they're acting a fool and eating some baits in the wind then i'll battle the wind there is something to say about a nice still morning especially after a good cup of coffee and then you pick up your your worm and you throw it out there and it's calm and you see your line twitch you know there's something to be said about that i totally i totally dig that too jerk bait time it's just a fish crusher y'all it's good anytime you have moderately stained uh to clear water it's not good in dirty water, but if you've got a lake that has visibility, this thing all through the winter, early spring, spring, post-spawn even, and there's variations of these. You can fish uh, ones that float on top. We don't make one, but our, ours is just suspends. But you know, you can fish them as top waters as well. It's pretty nuts. I see some fish kind of scattered here on the, the rip wraps oh yeah I should have caught one right there on that corner for sure I will I will get one right here there he is my gosh speak of the devil speak of the basses there you little juju bee first one of the day first one of the day on the trusty Trusty jerk. That looks like a hook in the hand situation. Go ahead and get the pliers on that one. Just a healthy little young buck. See my guy. I feel like I'm in a sauna right now. A sweet bass sauna. It's full of juicy bass. There's one. We got him. Oh, he come off. It's kind of sneaky. He was kind of starting to load up and get heavy on me. I've lost so many fish on this lake, especially on uh, crankbaits and stuff. And 
I tried switching up hooks and all that and mainly this this lake and other <clears throat> warm water lakes their mouths get nice and soft and gooey those little tissues get all warmed up I mean especially in the summer my gosh but you know in the winter their mouths are cold and hard and well you stick them there I mean they're not the holes not getting any bigger it's all hardened up but you know a nice warm one they come off pretty easy now I can see the tilapia on the electronics don't believe those are shad they look too big to be a shad they look too small to be a bass and they're spaced out more than a shad would be switch up here all right get the recon get it down there dig it up dig it up dig dig in yeah all right now we're just looking like the floor is made of tilapia on the graph which at that point when you have that much bait in an area it's like why would they why would they eat this you know they can smell they know oh we got something on the crank and it's a bass little rando rogue fish little guy <clears throat> Whoever got my last bass boat got a lot of waypoints, I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> I've started fresh on my waypoints on this boat, and I'm trying to go off memory. There's uh, there's areas all around this lake that have like rock structures and stuff, and uh, you know I've spent a lot of time idling around finding them. I I can't find them right now because it's so steamy. I I can't get any land markers. You know, I can't even do it the old-fashioned way, so I'm just kind of, kind of throwing this crankbait, trying to feel the bottom. But there's a, there's just a lot of scattered uh, bass throughout here because it's a, it's a huge flat that's about 10 to 12 foot where I've been catching them this week. So, you know, it's a good, uh, that's that perfect depth for them. A little bit of a something there. There we go. Oh gosh. Absolutely smoked. Fighting hard. Come here, buddy. There's a better one. Give me your face. Oh. Don't move. You've been charged with Wanting a chartreuse and blue crankbait. Anything you do at this point, I will give you a good sniff anyways. But don't hook me in the hand or I will send you to the fillet knife. I'm kidding y'all, I would not do that. Nice fish in the steamy bath. If you guys missed the first video, textbook cranking having to hit the bottom to get bit that was it still continuing it's just this is a little a little different i'm literally cranking to try to i'm cranking the, as using it as my uh gps right now I'm trying to find some hard spots if i find a really good hard rocky spot then i'm gonna throw that uh football jig or a carolina rig on it oh i am in that is it that is the rock we should get just gobbled right there just gotta get the boat position right here i'd be offended if i didn't get hung up in this rock it's so nasty okay, I got him oh yeah I had to do it right you had to I had to get it decent one There we go, another solid bass flapping in the wind. I didn't think it was going to be this windy. Oh, look, he's peeing. Let's give me a little extra excitement here. See you, buddy. Look at the look at the chunkness of that fish. The fish is maybe 14, and he's like two and a quarter, two and a half. 
Probably two and a half pounds. Like, just dense little turkeys. I think this will get down there enough on that high spot. And it's just a big old presence. Oh yeah, there he is. On top. Grande banger. Come here, buddy. Oh, you are dark. Beautiful bass. You wanted that little tilapia bluegill situation, didn't you? Look at that beautiful fish, y'all. It's awesome. Oh my gosh, I still got him, still got him. Big head shakes. Good fish. Oh buddy, come here. Man, y'all, I was hitting those rocks. Oh gosh, he came off right there, that gum it. Ah. <laughs> my rod i thought it was hung and then it just started moving hanging out in the fog and the wind has been worth it this morning uh that last fish i lost was a good one it was in the four pound range i think i'm gonna fish a few more areas on this lake before i head to the other one uh, we're still really early it's like nine o'clock so just try a couple things and then we'll get on the road where it might be really tough but i just i feel like the chances of a big one are greater hell of a good warm-up this morning you know getting that getting that crank on the last 24 hours i've just been getting beat up by the wind still catching fish though that's the important thing we're gonna do a little offshore action oh that is delicious on that three aught there's just a hard spot out here where i'm at and there's some fish that are kind of moving through so we get a little foggy here not big numbers but i'm hoping uh there'll be a big one what's down there Just little butternut squashes oh my oh my you're healthy Woo! get it out little pee extra fun boop boop might not be the ones we're looking for there all right this is my last stop right here i've waited to fish this spot for a couple days it's always been a boat here and wind was blowing on it pretty bad so oh my gosh the bass or the bird has a fish I'm so excited I think I'm going to end on that, even though it's not a timber tuna. I just needed a good old jig bite, you know? Goodbye, my sweet. And we're heading to another lake. We are here at another lake. Uh, the lady at the, the front, when I was coming into the park, she said, hey, they, they're catching them crappies. They're catching them crappies right now. Come on, camera, focus. I, I'm talking about crappies. Do some idling around and see. I'm trying to just go after a whopper bass this afternoon. But right now, there's a man down here at the boat ramp. I just pulled up and he said, man, can you help me with my boat? It's out in the middle of the lake. It's somehow drifted off. So, gotta go help someone out. 
and hopefully that's going to bring us the good vibes, the good luck. There he goes, man. There he goes. <laughs> oh my God, he was all, he was all the way over here. He's like probably 800 yards from the ramp. The water's so low right now that when you back your your trailer in, it it'll automatically just kind of lift your boat up. So happens to the best of us. Okay. Fish number one is a drum on a crappie jig. That's ugly. So we've gone from, you know, mid 60s water to 55, which isn't terrible, quite honestly. I mean, this is not a power plant lake, but where I was uh, fishing just a few weeks ago or just a week ago up in my hometown I mean it was in the 40s y'all this is what I'm looking at all over the lake just I guess they're gizzard shad and maybe some thread fins mixed in with maybe some small white bass or something but it is just wow so many little bait situations going on here and it's a Tuffy McGee. I went to three different areas. I don't know if I'm seeing bass or not. I mean, it could be drum, it could be carp. And I was trying to find some brush piles to get on some bass and going on memory because I don't have my, my GPS waypoints saved in this uh, boat from years ago when I fished out here a lot. Even then, I, I just didn't find any anything juicy. So I'm just gonna go to a you know standard winter time, early spring time looking area some rocks rocks i got deep water close by try dragging these rocks cranking them a little bit see if we can pull up um that one big largey but i'm definitely glad that i fished the other place this morning even though i was kind of getting tired of it it was just uh it was fun it was <laughs> it was fun to bring some fish in the boat before i came out here back to you know stepping back two months basically in water temps and uh going back to slow fishing I'm doing it for the bigs man Gotta grind if you want the big ones. I'm giving her all she's got, man. It's not the juice. Not the juice right now. So now I'm wondering like, should I even fish here tomorrow? Cause it's gonna take me quite a long time to, uh, to locate brush piles and things like that. I'm on about my lure. You sons dicks. We're going to take her to camp. Well, this one has proved to be a toughy McSucker. I'm going to kind of split up my journey tomorrow. I might go to a, another lake. Another lake that has grass. That's, that's the savior. The winter, early spring savior. I'm not too impressed right now with what's going on with this lake. So I'm just going to take a breather on it. Now this is half the fun. Traveling around and bass fishing, y'all. I am camping next to a lake. I've done this at, well, this is going to be my second lake now. There's uh, parks like this all over the state of Texas that I know of. I've been to other states, obviously, that have great camping as well that you can get 110 hookups and stuff. It's like 30, 25 bucks to 35 bucks uh, to get that electricity hookup. That way you can charge your boat. Uh, you don't have to run a generator. If you want to go full off grid, you can do that too in, in state parks and stuff like that. But I like to do it all, y'all. And the, the simplest way to do it, if you got a truck cap, just sleep in your truck. I mean, I'm, I'm down with uh, setting up a tent and everything too, but it's just pretty, it's fast this way. Like if I want to make the quick decision to leave here in the morning, not fish this lake, which I'm going to do, it's real easy. And this crate that I built, I built this for all around crap, especially big loads and, and also firewood. This is a plastic one, it'll kind of get flimsy around the sides, but I've got the boat cover in here, pull that out. I've got my firewood in here, so most places like this have a fire pit, this one does. 
Get a fire going, set the ambiance before you go crush Mondo's. Or you could grill up some weenies or some maybe some prime ribs, you know, something tasty. I cooked some sausage on some coals the other night doing that. Of course, you got to have yourself an extension cord. So now I'm going to show you how I set up my camp at night when I'm, when I'm truck camping. So I'll take the crate out. Don't want to blow the back out. I'll blow the back out on a big bass, but not on video demonstration purposes. Take the cooler out. We can go plug that into 110, or we can plug it in to the Jackery. So really the only two things I have left in here are my bedroll and my, uh, my food, my, my eat kit is what I like to call it. So I've got freeze dried meals in here. I've got breakfast style. I've got my favorite chili mac. I've got a bunch of those. I keep quick oatmeals, instant oatmeals, and put with hot water. Emergency, you gotta keep your vitamins and minerals up when you're on the road. I have a tendency to just eat a lot of meat and you know, pretty much just meat with no other vegetables and minerals and stuff like that. So I like to take these. Keeps you healthy, especially when it's cold. Examples of other foods that are storable. I got pistachios right here. Want to get my snack on? Bucky's beef jerky, triscuits. These arguably pretty stale at the moment. Then I've got some healthy snack bars. I like to carry around these RX bars. Stephanie recommends these. They're pretty, pretty simple stuff, and they're not a whole lot of junk. And then if I want to treat myself to like a honey stinger or something like that. I got almond butter, almond butter, put it on a honey stinger, waffle cake, eh, special treat y'all. And I do keep some, some of these wipes right here. What are these called? Probably a bunch of brands make them, but they're, they're biodegradable wipes. So if you want to feel fresh before you go to bed, you can do just a body wipe down, uh, biodegradable, so you could also use it on the rear if you needed to, nice, comfortable, alternative. And while we're in here, let's pick out our meal for tonight. I'm feeling lasagna with meat sauce. I'll also carry, you know, meat and stuff in the in the cooler. I'll go through that. Maybe maybe keep some sandwiches. Just whatever you want. But I always keep this just in case there's like nowhere to get food or you know, that stuff can expire that's in the fridge. Maybe you ran out of ice, forgot to plug the, the medic in or something. These will save your butt. So keeps you keeps you going, keeps you fed, and you can literally keep it in your truck, not have to worry about it. You know it's gonna be okay. Boy, I miss the sound of that train down here. Man, Woo. love being back down here. And then in this other bin, I keep my food kit or my, my food cooking kit, basically. So in here, I keep uh, a spork and a little, uh, little napkin, a little layout kind of like a you know, dinner table cloth sort of thing. I got a couple of cups. I got a 550 mil and a, and a 400. If you don't have sriracha sauce or some sort of hot sauce, it could save you. On day four or five when you're out there and you're like, you know, I just need some flavor. Something like that, gotta have it. I learned that backpack hunting. Woo. Man, some Taco Bell hot sauce? Woo! Tastes like a fine wine after many days. And then I've got my burner, um, and I keep multiple propanes in here. Got a big hose if I want to hook up. I've actually got a, a Coleman up top here. So if you want to break out the big guns, we've got all that stuff. We've got extra jumper, jumper cables, ratchet straps, anything, you know, tools, stuff to fix stuff when stuff happens stuff does happen when you're on the road. And now let me take y'all into the bedroom where the magic definitely doesn't happen. I usually take some of the stuff out of the truck and I throw it up there at night just to keep you know raccoons or whatever and just get it out of the way. If I don't want it on the ground you know creatures getting into it especially my food. Just don't forget about it once you put it up there. I've done that once. I just unbuckle this that's the tail end. Push that out. My Chevy here, she's about a foot short. So I do have to leave the tailgate down and I close this when I'm sleeping. And I need to figure out a situation, a little deal that I can put like a mesh screen or some sort of 
like a cover that can just just fall down here. Maybe it has a, a, like a keel or a weight on the bottom to just keep things out, you know? I'm always worried like, hey, maybe a raccoon come up in here and want to get him a get him a lick on my face or something. But the big thing is mosquitoes. I don't have to worry about it right now, but having a mesh screen right there, and then you can open up the uh, the side screens of the truck cap. So the bedroll, this, uh, this is made by Canvas Cutter. I've shown this in some of my hunting videos before, but all you fishing freaks out there that are looking to do some extended travel fishing, here you go. This thing is uh, actually waterproof, so if you wanted to sleep outside with it, you could, but it makes the perfect truck bed bed. There's a foam pad under here. That foam pad is, is pretty thick. I can sleep on my side. My hip bone doesn't dig into the bottom of the truck. I've got a zero degree bag. When it's in the 40s, it's perfect. If it gets in the 30s, like low 30s, brown freezing, it's a little chilly. I'll have to put on a, a base layer. Got a pillow from home and I carry a camp pillow as well, like a small one. Best thing about sleeping next to the water is the travel time to the lake is none. We are gonna sign it off for today, y'all. And the next video is just gonna be me going to another lake, just trying to figure things out uh, from scratch, just kinda in a, in a half day. Uh, so I'm heading home. Tomorrow I'm gonna hit a lake on the way back. Uh, I'm just gonna try a variety of different things, see if I can get, get on a general bite and then hopefully get a big one. I'm yet to catch a fish over five in the new year. I love me some fishing, y'all. I get excited at the beginning of the year just thinking of the, of the whole year and all the fishing opportunities that are to come. Uh, so anyways, I, I'm amped. I love it, y'all. I'm gonna sleep next to the fish here, next, next to the water, and uh, get up and do it all over again. So stay tuned for the next one. God bless you. We'll see you soon.